and gentlemen, do you know how much I love Billy Stretch? This guy is unbelievable. I love, I love you, Billy. I think you're amazing. I love you as well. No, it's, oh, okay. I can't even. That goes so deep for me, geez. Yeah, this will be the gayest show you guys ever see. Okay, but besides that, I just want to say, what a fabulous intro. It's, you know, every time I do a benefit, it's just lovely for the comics. Six million Jews died in the Holocaust. Here she is, ladies and gentlemen, Jenny Go! You know, I love that, so. What? Yeah, more depressing. No, more depressing. We need more depressing. No. But we are, we're here to laugh now. We're done with the depression, okay? Except for my clinical depression that runs in my family. But, um, no, I'm happy to be here. I, I came from the Upper West Side. Oh, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, do you have a lot of Upper West Siders here? You are not gonna believe what I saw today walking down the street on the Upper West Side. I, you never see this there. I'm walking down Broadway. I actually saw this Asian baby with Asian parents. I was like, what is going on here? Where's your mother, you know? So, yeah, it was shocking. I, uh, before I continue, I know, I, whenever I wear this blouse shirt, whatever it's called, I'm a dyke, so I don't know what it's called, but anyway, whenever I wear this, people always say to me, who do you remind me of? And I'm just gonna get it out of the way now because it's constant, 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 Michelle Obama, ladies and gentlemen. So, I just, we're going to the same trainer, and it's, yeah, it's kind, everyone's like, Michelle, I'm like, no, huh? But, um, <laughs> No, it's great to be, I love performing in New York. We are the, first of all, greatest audience. Don't you think we have the greatest audiences here? And we're the smartest people in the world. You know, <laughs> the only annoying thing I find about New York City is our anti-smoking campaign. I can't take it anymore. I am so sick of looking at people who have smoked too much and then, I, it's not my issue, okay? I don't want to take, remember a couple of years ago this whole thing started, they had the guy, I wanted to be an umpire. <laughs> Why can't this guy be an umpire, okay? They don't talk, they use hand signals, okay? And he could be the catcher as well. Then they had the guy, it's gonna get way worse than this, ladies and gentlemen, so you better, you know, really like it. Then they had the guy, uh, remember the guy who wanted to swim? I was swimming, swimming was always a part of my life. I never thought I wouldn't be able to swim. You know what, go on from the waist down and shut the fuck up. I have my own issues, okay? about you drowning on the, in the pool, okay? But then, they have, now they have Marie from the Bronx. Who wants to look at, you know who I'm talking about? All over the subway is Marie, who has no fingers because she smoked. Let me tell you something. I know plenty of people, they've been smoking for about 50 years, they have all their digits. What they didn't say was that Marie was smoking a cigarette while she was mowing the lawn, okay? <laughs> and the reason she doesn't smoke anymore is because she can't hold or light the cigarette, so. And look at her picture next time and tell me that her smoking is her number one problem, okay? <laughs> How about crystal meth, Marie? Right? <laughs> yeah, it's tough. it's tough. I don't smoke. I try to keep very healthy. But you know, because you get older and it's, you, know, you gotta really worry about the health issue. I know we're here for a disease, but you know, it's like you never know what you're gonna get. And you really gotta take care of yourself. And, you know, anyone in their 20s? Do you have anyone in their 20s here? <laughs> gotta go. Good night, everybody. Um, I'm putting my cards down. I can't do all the don't remember to introduce whatever. But all right, who's in their twenties? Where are we? <laughs> so how old are you? How old? Twenty-eight. Twenty-four. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Here's what I remember. Do you remember being twenty-four, Billy? Vaguely, because you know this is what the difference is. Twenty-four. It was the way I introduced my friends to each other. I remember in my 20s, I'd always be like, oh, you gotta meet my friend Billy, he's amazing, he just ran the marathon, he passed the bar, he's really into jazz, he has a wine cellar. Now in my 40s, this is how I introduce my friends to each other. Okay, um, my friend Sandy's coming over, she's amazing, you are gonna love her, but <laughs> they just found a tumor behind her right eye. It's nothing, it's completely benign, they're taking it out, look at the left eye, because the right eye is like going all over the place. That joke wasn't really appropriate, but um, but it's true. You get you turn forty, everyone has a tumor. I am so, and it's always the size of a fruit. That's the annoying thing. Every time, I go, oh, they found something. It's the size of a lemon. It's the size of a grapefruit. Let me tell you something. If I had something the size of a grapefruit inside of me, I would fucking see it. Okay, I'm sick of it. 
I think in our generation, Toomer should come in tall, grande, and vente, okay? <laughs> So yeah, I'm a Jew hypochondriac. Where are the Jews? Do we have the Jews here today? Oh, of course, we are the best. Happy Hanukkah, by the way. Or Kwanzaa, whatever you, they totally copied us. All right, let's just talk about how they copied us on the Kwanzaa thing. But anyway, um, no, I love being Jew. You know, what's your favorite Jew holiday? What's your, you like Hanukkah the best? I love Passover. I mean, the first two days, then, you know, then I'm like, oh, the whole, you know, for the rest of the day. But, Passover I love. You know why it's the most amazing? Because this past Passover was awful. I really, it was just terrible. I can't even, it was, I had a yeast infection during Passover. I wasn't allowed to attend the Seder and it was really, so I don't want to talk about it and I'm going to finish the topic right now, but. <laughs> it's not disgusting. Who said this? Only a guy would say it's disgusting. I have to turn on the TV and hear about your goddamn enlarged prostate. How much? I don't care. <laughs> It's a goddamn joke. <laughs> so, um, I am a lesbian. I do live on the Upper Woo! West Side. It's shocking. I'm a Jewish lesbian on the Upper West Side, the only one. Um, my kids have two Jewish mothers. How, would you not kill yourself right then and there? Okay. And my mother's the most supportive human being. My mother, I gotta tell you, I have two kids, Henry and Ben. Henry's 13, Ben's eight. And I gave birth to one, and my ex gave birth to the other, and we each adopted. And, you know, my mother, when Henry was born, did not know how to explain it to her friends because by that time, my ex and I had only been together for about 12 years, so no one had any idea what was going on. So, and she's the one that had given birth, so she used to tell people that my roommate had a baby and I adopted it. You know, like, it was something in the apartment, we were splitting, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Judith's roommate, she's a lovely girl, she takes in the mail when Judith travels. She was walking down the street, there was some hypodermic needle flying around, she happened to have sperm in it, land of vagina. She had a baby and then Judith adopted. So this is what she's talking about. <laughs> she's the most annoying human being in the entire, I can't even tell you. She's like, my, the thing about my mother is, my mother, you know, she can't, you, anything you say to her, she has this talent where you say whatever, and she can not only make it negative, but she can also make it about herself, like anything you say. Like I called her, last New Year's, I called her, she's like, what are you doing tonight for New Year's? I said, oh, we're having a dinner party, we ordered it filet mignon and caviar, I'll be eating shit. <laughs> oh, hey, serve the shit, might you put that over a little pasta, a little vegetable medley on the side? I called, well, I call her every day because I need material, but I called her up, this is so literal. <laughs> I have no acts with her. I sit in therapy every week going, what am I going to do when she dies? I'm going to have no jokes. What am I going to do when she dies? I'm going to have no jokes. But anyway, so she's 87 now. And um, every time she's obsessed with dying. So every time I call her, I'll be like, Ma, you want to go out to lunch? I'll be dead by then. I should just jump dead. I'm dying. Die anu. Die, die anu. So this is totally true. I called her up. This was several months ago. I called her up. And we're having a big lightning. Remember, remember in June? when it was like raining and it was 40 degrees for the entire month. So I call her up and we're having one of these rainstorms. This is the exact conversation we had. Hello? Hi, it's me. I can't talk. Why? Because it's lightning out and you're not supposed to talk on the phone after a lightning storm. I'm like, why? I thought you wanted to drop dead. This is perfect. We're chit-chatting. <laughs> Rosenberg. What are the chances of her getting struck by lightning? First of all, she doesn't even have a cordless phone. She has a princess phone from like 1976. And she has my bar mitzvah cake in the freezer, which has been through about 97 blackouts. You should come over and have some. But, uh, no, the other day I was on the phone with her. I sneezed once. She goes, what, do you have a cold? I said, I think so. Get that! I don't know, Ma, I was at the store the other day. I was gonna get like swine flu or tuberculosis, but I didn't have my credit card on me, so I just picked up this cold instead. You really love the disease jokes here, I love it. So, no, but I, uh, she's very annoying, but I, did, I found a future career for my mother. I think that this is gonna work out really well. I, this is true, I actually, I don't have a GPS because I hate the GPS woman. Do you, I don't, anyone else? Because, no, I find her the most annoying. First of all, you know, she doesn't shut up the entire car ride, and then the minute you don't do what she says, she has a mental breakdown, okay? <laughs> I have that with my kids. I don't need that with the goddamn GPS phone. The recalculating route, recalculating route, recal... So I have decided my mother should be the GPS phone. Don't you think she would be perfect? Turn left at 11 miles. Get over there now with your signal on, I want you to be prepared. Make your second right on Elm Street. I want you to drive by Rona Steinblatt's house and see if she's still alive and never really cared for her. Make your third left at the Dairy Queen. Don't go in there anti-Semitic! 